Three weeks out and Democrats' best chance to flip a Senate seat may be in the least likely place, Texas, where Republicans have long had an iron grip on statewide office. Well, tonight, a critical debate. On one side, Republican Ted Cruz, once called Lucifer in the flesh by then House Speaker John Boehner, and who came uncomfortably close to being beaten by Beto O'Rourke last time. On the other side, Congressman Colin Allred, a college and NFL linebacker in football crazy Texas. Football hurts. I've got a plate and two screws in my neck to prove it. I was captain at Baylor. I get it. No pain, no gain. You got to fight for it. What's Ted Cruz fought for? Himself. This is the guy who fled to Cancun while Texans were stuck at home freezing. Well, Allred does have a track record. He flipped a Republican congressional seat in 2018. And now tight polls have Democrats pumping cash into that race. It just isn't critical to Senate control. It's also a litmus test for whether Texas is turning purple. NBC's Ryan Nobles is reporting on Capitol Hill. Also joining us, Jeremy Wallace, political reporter for the Houston Chronicle, and Julian Castro, former HUD secretary and MSNBC political analyst who knows Texas very, very well. Okay, Ryan, lay out the stakes and, and how this race fits into the bigger picture of Democrats trying to maintain control of the Senate. I mean, it is the ball game for Democrats in many ways, Chris. They have a very difficult map. They are defending way more seats than they are trying to win back into their column. And Texas represents their best opportunity to turn a Republican seat into a Democratic seat. But that's not really saying very much. If uh, Republicans were able uh, to be defeated in Texas, that would still come as a pretty big surprise. That's despite the fact that Colin Allred uh, has pulled within the margin of error in many of the public polling that we've seen has raised millions of dollars and seems to be running a pretty competitive campaign against Ted Cruz. His biggest problem, though, is that he's running in a presidential election year, and uh, the former president, Donald Trump, is running ahead of Kamala Harris in most public polls, somewhere between five and seven points, so he'd have to find a way to close that gap. Tonight, perhaps, uh, provides him that best opportunity. In many ways, you have to think of Texas as a mini country. It has 20 different media markets. It is very expensive to get that message out throughout the entire state uh, tonight he'll have that opportunity in this televised debate which will be seen in all 20 of those media markets and it will be the only opportunity for Texas voters to see Cruz and Allred on the same stage and compare and contrast the two candidates before election day. Chris. And Jeremy I'm going to go back to the debate but let me pick up with what Ryan just said which is about how expensive uh, Texas is as a place to run and Ted Cruz is being outspent and this is his latest plea for help. Chuck Schumer has been explicit. I'm his number one target in the country. Chuck Schumer and George Soros are flooding over $100 million into the state of Texas. I'm getting pounded every day. We had a poll just come out yesterday, showed it as a one-point race, and we're getting viciously outspent. So please come to TedCruz.org, TedCruz.org. I need your help and support. Hoping for some cash there when he's on Fox News. But, Jeremy, does it feel on the ground like a one-point race? And are you seeing signs on the ground of having less money impacting Cruz? Well, I, I think the nerves of Ted Cruz tells us how close this race is. You know, you got to remember back in 2018, he only won his reelection by about 200,000 votes. We've added 2.6 million voters since that time. That's a lot of people that he has to win over in addition to whoever he won over in 2018. He has that struggle, and then he has to struggle with independence. Like, he is upside down with independence. Over, you know, actually, his numbers with independence are worse than they were, you know, six years ago. And so he really needs to go really negative on Colin Allred. And in this debate tonight, watch him try to make Colin Allred seem very unappealing to independent, moderate type voters out there. That is his whole mission, to try to make somehow Colin Allred feel like he is out of place with, you know, a more moderate, a more moderate Democrat like Colin Allred has pitched himself. That is the battle line in this debate tonight for Ted Cruz. So, uh, Julian, can I just say, and I'm not surprised because Jeremy's such a great reporter, but I 
thought I knew a lot about this race. I sat up straight when he said 200,000 votes in a state where 2.6 million people uh, have come in. That's, first of all, an astonishing number. And, and we looked back at all the Senate races from 2016, 2020, and you only find one presidential Senate split ticket. That's Republican Susan Collins, who won in 2020 when Joe Biden carried Maine, but, you know, she's awfully moderate. So uh, to pick up on, on where Jeremy left off about who those voters are that he can appeal to generally and tonight specifically, who are the voters, do you think, who might be Trump all red voters? That's a great question. And I think that there are plenty of uh, independent voters, especially in the suburbs of the big cities of San Antonio, Austin, Houston, Dallas. We've seen in the Trump era, Texas go from uh, a state that voted uh, by 16 points, plus 16 for Mitt Romney in 2012, to, to about five and a half for Donald Trump in 2020. So the state has taken a move to the middle, and that's largely been powered by the growth in urban areas, but also shifts in the suburbs. Uh, I think particularly suburban women. The All Red campaign has, uh, of course, made reproductive rights an issue. Uh, I think they're going to continue to do that. He's also had the resources, as you mentioned earlier, to do that and do that effectively. He's outspending Ted Cruz. And then, uh, Chris, people don't like Ted Cruz. Uh, he is just in a weaker position because I think that there may be folks that go out there and, yeah, they vote for Donald Trump, but they just don't care for Ted Cruz. I think that's part of what drove uh, Beto O'Rourke to get within three points of him in 2018. Uh, it's part of what's driving his weakness now. It's not just about Texas shifting over. It's about the particular weakness of Ted Cruz. And, and Allred has done a great job of focusing on that. A lot of his ads focus on uh, the images of when Ted Cruz fled to Cancun uh, during the winter freeze. They've made it seem like he's out just for himself. That's an argument that I think resonates not only with Democrats, but also with independents and even some Republicans who like Donald Trump, but don't care for Ted Cruz. Yeah, and, and I think it's, it's, there's a question, Jeremy, and I've read all kinds of analysis about this, but I'll let you speak to it, is his campaign leaning is into his football background, suggestions that he can talk about reproductive rights without seeming to some voters less than masculine because he has this football player linebacker persona. Um, and I wonder, is this truly helping in a state where football is king. Yeah, well, look, it certainly helps him quite a bit, I think, because it's not just that he's a football player. He's a football player from Baylor University, one of the more conservative universities, you know, mm -hmm. campuses in the state of Texas. You know, that appeals to a lot of people. He was a Friday Night Lights kid. You know, he played football, you know, in the high school football fields all across the state. All that does resonate with voters to a point. And it partly explains why, you know, I, I was looking at the, the TV ad buying by, you know, the Ted Cruz campaign. They bought a lot of time on Dallas Cowboy football games to try to attack Colin Allred as not being part of Texas and trying, being, and trying to label him too extreme. So they see that vulnerability as well. But I think your point is right. I think, you know, Colin Allred, like, you know, he, he, he's a young guy. He looks football player. He is Mr. Linebacker. And they're putting that all front and center. And I think in the debate tonight, watch that contrast. He's going to be able to kind of show himself as a younger, fresher face. And that might appeal to some Texans who may be on the fence right now. Again, I'm not expecting a lot of Trump voters to switch over to vote for Allred. The question for Allred is, can, you know, he get more voters out than Ted Cruz? Ted Cruz has to get all these voters out this election cycle all on his own. Trump's not doing much in Texas. So this, this whole get out the vote operation is on the shoulders of Ted Cruz right now. Yeah, and, and he doesn't like it, obviously, as we saw on Fox News. So, so Julian, look, the Wall Street Journal says Allred has been running what might be considered the opposite of Beto O'Rourke's campaign. It's focused on TV ads over rallies. He's less prominent in the media. Many of his in-person events are actually small gatherings. Uh, he goes to professional and industry groups. Is he running a smart campaign? Does that make sense for this campaign and, and frankly, who he is? I mean, the polls would suggest that, that the answer to that is yes. Of course, we're going to find out in November, but it is the opposite. I think the strategy here is he's not trying to be Mr. Democrat. 
he's not trying to stir things up uh, among Democrats and carry the, the, the banner. What he wants is just to be an acceptable, uh, appealing alternative to folks who are dissatisfied with Ted Cruz. And you have a presidential race that I think his campaign is relying on to get the base out. They're going to get out there to go vote for Kamala Harris uh, and vote against Donald Trump. They think, I think, in the All Red campaign that that's taken care of. Now he can focus, and they have been focused on just being a good, acceptable alternative that's moderate, that's not scary, that you don't like Ted Cruz or you're dissatisfied with him, you think he's been in there too long. He said he believed in term limits, but he's he's still trying to run again. Okay, support Colin at All Red, even if you vote for Donald Trump. Jeremy, we're just about out of time, but I have to ask you what you think uh, Ted Cruz's strategy is tonight. How does he make use of that time on TV? He, again, he's got to get very negative. I think just like you know, he, right now he has four TV ads he's running in succession that are all, again, uh, calling all red, all attack ads related to transgender issues. Expect that to be the you know their attack tonight. That's the issue that they think they've been making some progress on. Some of the internal polling from you know Republicans have shown that uh, Colin Allred's unfavorables have been climbing since those ads started to you know be aired. So I think this is Cruz's chance to use his debate skills to try to get Colin Allred you know on those issues, trying to get really uh, negative on him in these attacks. You're not going to see Mr. Nice Guy with Ted Cruz. Yeah. Early on, he was trying to be Mr. Bipartisan. I I work with everybody. Not in this you know, debate. This debate, he's got to go right after Colin Allred from the get-go.